God wants you to live securely. That's right, my friends. God wants you to live a life of security. Think about it. Jesus comes into the world to pay for our sins so that we might know that we have everlasting life, that our security is in him, that we're going to heaven, not because we're good, not because we're born in America or some other country or because we live in some state, but because Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. There's security in that. He wants us to know that We are secure in his hand. Jesus talks about that in John chapter 10, that there's no one greater than the Father, and the Father loses none of his. We could look in 1 Peter, and it talks about how we are protected by the power of God for salvation, ready to be revealed on the last days. That's right, you're living in the last days, and uh, we're secure by the power of God. But Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, is talking about security, but in a different way. This is about security in life in the sense of, how you and I make decisions. Now, this is so, so important because there's a way that seems right to a person, but the end is destruction. That's what Proverbs tells us. But God wants you and me as followers of Jesus. If you haven't trusted in Jesus, today's the day of salvation. Trust in Jesus as your Savior. He died on the cross. He paid for sins. You can trust him right now. You can know for sure you're going to heaven. But listen to these words about security from Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 33. He who listens to me is the personification of of wisdom here. So he who listens to wisdom shall live securely, live securely. Shout it out. If you haven't already said hello to your friends, do so. Uh, But shout that out, live securely. That's what God wants for you. That's what he wants for me. And wisdom is the path to do that. It keeps on going and says, and shall not. So not only we get security when we listen to wisdom, we follow the principles of God's wisdom, but also we will, uh, we will be at ease uh, in the time of dread and evil. So, so when the world's falling apart, you and I can have a greater sense of peace and security that the world can't know by applying God's wisdom, right? All right, so live secure. If you haven't posted it, make sure you do it now, even if you're watching later. Live secure. That's what God wants. Now, let's talk about really quick about wisdom here. In this first chapter, He says, uh, the wisdom that we need comes from God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So uh, this this concept of fearing God, understanding that God is great, understand that when God speaks, it trumps everything else, and he's the final authority for faith, practice, and life, and everything else. And so we're looking to him. And we were warned yesterday that we are not to consent to evil. Do you remember that? When evildoers come along. Why? There are sinful people. Friends, this is so important. People are sinful, and they're going to try to entice us to believe the wrong things, to do the wrong things. You and I are inundated on all levels. And that's why the truth sets us free. That's why we got to know the truth. And then we have to not uh, uh, be enticed by the evil and not, not cave in. And then he moves from that whole discussion. And I want you to read, if you would, today, verse 20 through 33. And it talks about how wisdom in verse 20 shouts in the streets. In other words, God's not silent. He has a message. No one's listening. They're listening to everything else in the world, but they're not listening to God. I mean, after all, I mean, we got governors who think it's okay to have, you know, uh, uh, you know, liquor stores open and not churches. And we've seen this all along. I just got off the phone, friends in California, uh, the new regulations that are coming out there and so forth. Friends, it's crazy. The world has everything backwards. But wisdom shouts in the streets. Um, and then it basically goes on and describes how we pay no attention Verse 25 is a beautiful summation. You've neglected all my counsel. All the counsel of God, all the wisdom of God, we just ignore it. And it says, you did not want my reproof. Why, do, why does the world reject God's wisdom? It doesn't want to be reproved. doesn't want to be told by God. wants to be lawless. wants to be rebellious. No one's going to tell me, God, who do you think you are? God? Yeah, he is. And we should listen to him. But it's interesting. If you keep on reading, you've got to read this. It says, when you don't listen to wisdom and then calamity comes... That wisdom, the wisdom of God, again, it's a personification, laughs at the consequences. In other words, you and I pay no attention to God. We do something stupid. And then wisdom goes, I told you so, and just kind of laughs at us. God does that when people who are rebellious towards him in Psalm chapter 2. It says that God sits in the heavens. And when the, the world counsels against him and governors and leaders counsel against him, he says he laughs at them in the heavens. It's like, who do these people think they are? They're crazy. Friends, you and I have grown up with enough crazy things in our life. We need to come back to the wisdom of God. There's security in it. 
You know, I, I've shared my story with you lots of times. I've seen a lot of crazy things. Uh, I've seen people do a lot of crazy things. I've seen the calamity of all that. So when I trusted Jesus as my Savior, I read the book of Proverbs over and over and over again because I wanted the wisdom of God. I knew God had a better way. Listen, he's got a better way to handle finances. The wisdom of God is important there. He's got a better way to do marriage. He's got counsel there. Speaking our words, uh, he's got, he gives us counsel there. Anger, he gives us counsel there. A foolish man loses his temper, but a wise man holds it back. On and on it goes. We'll look at some of those things later, but I want you to remember this. There's security when you and I listen to the wisdom of God and then apply it in our lives. Well, hey, let's pray. And uh, just things to pray for. Uh, let's be praying that we have the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God to, to uh, repent, uh, to restore uh, one another, to uh, speak, to follow, uh, to do what is right and righteous. Ready to pray? Let's pray. Father, again, we're thankful that you're the God of heaven and earth. And God, we're thankful that you want us to live in security. Security of heaven, security in this life of, uh, of chaos and confusion by listening to your wisdom. God, your ways are better than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So God, we ask for wisdom. Uh, James chapter one tells us to ask, so we're asking for wisdom. Lord, help us as we ask for this wisdom to seek for it diligently, uh, as it says in Proverbs uh, two. Uh, help us to seek it diligently in the scriptures so that we might know how to repent as we should, so that we might know what it is to surrender to you, so we might know what it is to know justice and righteousness and goodness, so we might know how to speak and when to speak and why to speak, so that we might have the, uh, the wisdom, your wisdom, uh, to restrain from anger and exercise self-control and moderation. God, I just pray for blessing on all of my friends. Uh, Lord, may they find great joy and great security in your wisdom as I have found throughout my life. God, I'm just so thankful for your goodness. Thank you for the book of Proverbs. Thank you for your wisdom. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, the verse for the day, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 33, he who listens to wisdom shall live securely. Shout it out if you haven't. Live securely. All right, hold on to Jesus. Hold on to his promises. He is definitely going to carry us through. We'll see you tomorrow.